In this lecture, we now want to see how we can install Pentaho Community Edition. So this is the free edition that we can use with almost all of the tools that we need. And therefore we are going to install this. So what you need to make sure before you download and set up this Pentaho environment on your system that you have Java installed on your machine. If you don't have this installed, you need to also download Java. So you can just type in Java download and in here you find Java downloads for all operating systems. And then depending on the system, for example, if you have a Windows machine, probably you have a 64-bit Windows then, then you can download this window installation file and then just install Java also on your machine. This is absolutely needed to be able to launch and use Pentaho. So therefore, since I've already downloaded and installed this Java file on my machine, I can now go ahead and go to this first link on the search. So it's Pentaho and we can download it from here. Now, when we are on this site, we can simply click on this download button. And then after a few seconds, the download will start. And after this zip file has been downloaded, we can go to the folder where this was downloaded to. And afterwards, what we need to do is to extract the files in this zip folder. So we right click and then we use extract all. And we can then extract it also into the folder where we have downloaded this zip file to. And then shortly afterwards, the folder has been unzipped and we can now open up this folder. And in here we see data integration. And in here we have now all of the files. And what we need to do now is only open up the batch file. So we need to scroll down and find if we are on a Windows machine, this Windows batch file. This is the file that we use to open up Spoon. Spoon is basically the graphical interface of Pentao. So this is what we need to open up if we are on a Windows machine. If you are on a Linux or on a Mac, then you can just open up spoon.sh. But since I'm on a Windows machine, I'm now just going to open up this Windows batch file. So we can do that just by double clicking on it. And then I see that here is this little warning message that it cannot be opened up so easily because it has been detected as an unrecognized app. And therefore we can simply click here on more info and then we can click here on run anyways. If that is not opening up for you, just make sure that you have the latest Java version installed and also that if you're on a 64-bit system that you have installed the 64-bit version as well. And also what you might need to do is to open that up as an administrator. So you can right click and then open up as administrator. But this also just takes a while to be opened up. And in my case, this has now been opened up. And we will now not dive into the details. We will later on also have a quick introduction of this tool. But now we are happy that we have set up this successfully. So what we want to do now is also set up the database management system PostgreSQL. And that's what we are doing in the next lecture. We want to install PostgreSQL and this is a relational database system that consists of Postgres, the system itself, and the graphical interface that we use to write our commands and to manage all of the tables and databases in there. So that's what we are going to install and we can install the two of them in one single package. So what we need to do for that is just search PostgreSQL and we want to click on the first link. This just navigates us to PostgreSQL.org and at the top we have a download as well as download in here and we can just click on download. And then depending on the system that you are using on your machine, you can select either Linux, Mac OS, Windows or any of the other systems if you happen to have them.
In our case, we are just going to use Windows. If you have another operating system, then you can also just go ahead and the installation process will be pretty much the same. So I've now just clicked on Windows where we have just this site and we need to still navigate to download the installer and click that link. So we will be navigated to this new site in here where we now have the different PostgreSQL versions and their related operating systems. In my case, I'm on a Windows machine and if you are on a Windows machine, it's very likely that you are on a 64-bit system as well. So in case of doubt, if you're not sure, just go ahead with the 64-bit version. And of course, you can also just use a later version, but in my case, I'm just using the latest version. If this is not working for you and you are facing some issues, you can then also just try a previous version and this sometimes resolves the issues. So what I'm now going to do is just install the latest Windows 64-bit version. So I click on this little download icon and then this installation file will be downloaded. So once this has been downloaded, we can open up this installation file and we can proceed with the installation. So we click on next and this is just the location where we want to install this to. In our case, we can just leave it as it is and we can now here use the tools that we want to install. We can leave it as it is and we can just click on next. And again, this is the directory under which the data is stored. We can click on next and in here we need to set up a password for the database super user. I recommend to use just a simple password that is easy to remember because this is not really very sensitive and therefore I'm also not using a very complicated password. Just be sure that you write this password somewhere down because this is what you will also need later on. So we've entered now a password and retyped the same password and then we can click on next. Again, afterwards you have the port number and in here I just recommend to use the default setting. So usually if you have never installed this before, it should be 5432, but even if this is different in your case, I recommend to just leave it at the default setting. So in my case it's 5432 and I'm just again clicking on next. The locale we can also just let at the default. Again we can click on next, on next and then this will be now installed with the necessary components on our computer. All right, we have now successfully installed PostgreSQL. This checkbox we don't need to have checked, so we don't want to launch the stack builder. So we can now click on finish and we want to now open up pgadmin. This is again the graphical interface that lets us write all of the SQL commands and manage all of the databases and tables in our system. So I'm going to search just for PG admin and I am going to open that up. And you will see that this will open up and we need to enter our password. And I will do that now and then click on OK. And this we can also maximize. And now we are in PG admin 4 and we have on the left side our server and we have also the PostgreSQL version that you have installed as well. If you have previous versions installed as well, they are also visible. In my case, I'm just using the latest one. Again, I have to enter my password. I can also check the box to save the password, click on OK and then we are in our server so we can see by this icon that we are connected to that latest server and if we are opening up the databases we can see that currently there's only this sample database included. We will also create another database later on and we will also see how it works here in pgadmin so we will also again have a quick introduction into that. For now we have everything set up successfully after we have installed and set up our ETL tool and now also our database 
system. So this is now pretty cool and we also have learned about already the basics what a data warehouse is and with that we are now ready to dive deeper into understanding the data warehouses and the data warehouse architecture. And that's what we are going to do in the next section after which we then will dive deeper into the ETL process. So I hope you're excited about those two coming sections and we are now ready to dive into the data warehouse architecture in the next section.